Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another video. I paid £33 plus £9.5 postage for a 40 Xbox One X. This console, I bought this because I thought this was rather interesting. It's not even, as far as I'm aware, going to be a very interesting fix. But the description piqued my interest a little bit. So according to the description, this is 40. It says that the 40 is that it turns off after 30 seconds and that the hard drive has been removed. Now that there is key, because when the Xbox turns on, it will look for the hard drive, and if it doesn't detect it, if it detects that there's a fault with the hard drive or that it's missing, it will turn itself off within 30 to 60 seconds. So I thought I'd do a video on this and just show you all what I mean. Hopefully you enjoy it, and if you do, then make sure to hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications, and that way you don't miss any future videos. And if you do want to support me in any way, then you can head over to Twitch and become a Prime subscriber and then subscribe into my channel absolutely free. It does massively help me out, but it doesn't cost you a penny if you've already got Amazon Prime. So, like I said, this is apparently faulty. I don't know if it's the only fault. We're going to find that out. I haven't looked at it yet, but I paid £33 plus £9.05 and five pence postage. That comes to 30 30 <laughs> That comes to £42.05. and five pence. Which, according to Google today, that comes to $49.77. So, a little under 50 bucks, and uh, we've got ourselves a console. It's not going to be a massive money maker. These are losing value pretty quickly. And I'm only selling them for around about 60 to 70 pounds, depending on what hard drive I put in them. But, yeah, it, it makes an interesting video anyway. So, with that being said, let's get into this one, shall we? Right, yo. So, I'm going to turn this on first, and I'm going to see what's going on with it. I'll connect this up to the capture card. Okay, and it does turn on. Everyone say hello to Mr. Kip Hakes there. Uh, by the way, I highly recommend checking Mr. Kip Hakes out. That's his little sticker there. He's guarding the desk for me while I'm away. But I <laughs> highly recommend checking him out. I'll leave a link to his channel in the video description. Definitely some interesting content on his channel. Really do recommend it. And he's getting close to 10k subscribers, which would be absolutely awesome if we could help him get there. So I'll leave a link to his channel. If you like repair content and you know just general vlogs and things like that, then highly recommend him. So I can hear this spin up. No free disc, that sucks. I'm expecting this to turn off if the hard drive has been unplugged. Uh, and actually that's connected up to the TV, not to my capture card. I've got some ports just off the just out of view of the camera. And I've got one to the capture card, one to the TV. So I'll just turn the TV on and check it. And it's just shut off before the TV is even turned on. Well, let's turn it back on again. So, that is around about 30 to 60 seconds, actually. So, I'm not expecting this to display because there's no hard drive as well. But, yep, yeah, seems to be in line with the description so far. But it all depends if there's any other issues. But, yeah, as you can see behind me here, there's no display on that TV. It's just come up with no signal. See that? Magic. Now, I've got a screen in front of me. I can actually see what's going on behind me. But yeah, that does seem to be in line with the description so far. So, let's get it apart and hopefully we can figure this one out. So, it's struggling to shut down as well because the hard drive apparently isn't in there. And we've definitely got some damage here to this bottom case, to the bottom cover. So, I'll likely replace that, which does suck because that does eat into the profits and things like that. But that being said... There's really not much profit in these anymore. I'll just buy these just to give me something interesting to make a video on. Okay, so someone's definitely half arsed it. Half the screws are not even screwed in properly. So what I'm going to do, even though it's very likely going to be a hard drive issue, I am going to take it apart and clean it anyway. So I may as well take all the screws out. Why someone's put tape here, I'll never know. Oh, right, now I know. It's to, it's to keep that screw in. All right, well, that makes sense. At least I've actually included the screw. So that's a plus, I suppose. I mean, it's not a big deal. I do have loads of these screws. And now I can't get the bloody thing out. Damn it. Get out. Mug me off. Hold them, Kip. Thank you, dude. Ah, damn it, wrong screwdriver. I'll do that one in a minute. I've got the T8 in because I'm too lazy to change it. Yeah, that one's... 
Oh, I just realised that's meant to be a screw, a green one. Damn it! Why is there a green? Oh wow! Oh, okay. Well, there's the green screw. That's meant to be there. That's meant to be there. What are you doing, dude? Hold that one as well, keep. Thank you, mate. And that one. Keep is very helpful, so I highly recommend checking him out. And this appears to have been cleaned. Oh, they've took the caddy. You punk. What a dick. Such a dick move to make. I've got loads of them, it's fine. Right, have I forgot a screw? Yep, of course I have. One more keep. There we go. Thanks, dude. Doesn't feel like the board's been out, though. So, this clip doesn't feel like it's been off before. So, that's cool. Looks like they've cleaned out the fan. And the ports look to be in reasonable condition as well. Okay, well, then I guess all we need to do is replace the thermal pasta and call it good. Well, and the hard drive, of course. Yeah, so that's factory thermal paste there. So we'll replace that. Okay, let's add some fresh thermal pasta here. I'm using the best damn thermal pasta in the world. And this one's all mine. It's just MX4. <laughs> so I'll clean off the heatsink as well while I'm at it. So I'm doing this because if I'm going to be selling this, if I'm going to resell this at all, then I'm going to want to make sure it works 100% and that it's not going to have any issues because I do have to give a warranty on the things that I sell. And then I'll just get rid of the little bits of dust that's on it as well. It looks like someone's done a fairly decent job of cleaning it. So let's add some fresh thermal paste. Let's find a hard drive for this. So I've got a replacement drive there. That's a 500 gigabyte Seagate. And that's come out of a console that I couldn't fix. So it's already got the caddy with it as well. So that's good to see. So I'll just start putting this back together. Enough for testing. Okay. And I'll pop the screws back in. I don't think there's going to be anything else wrong with this, to be honest. There we go, that is back together, and um, technically, it should work. Let me find a replacement base for it. I think that one there, although it's a little bit scratched up, is much better than the one that was with it. So I'll use that. There we go, that is a lot better. So now we don't have that damage there, and my own warranty sticker will go there anyway. It's a little bit scratched on the back, but it's still much better than it was. So that was the original, as you can see. And yeah, definitely, definitely could have done a better job of opening that. Not me, I mean the last person who worked on it. A little bit of a savage. But never mind. I will still keep that just in case I need one as an absolute emergency. I'll never throw them away just for that little bit there. But you know, it is what it is. I'd rather replace it whenever I've got one available. And I do have quite a few of them. You watch, I'll put this back together and it doesn't display. Okay, still turns on. We haven't broken it. So we should see this go into safe mode. There we go. Boom. And that's displaying. 
The question is, is it going to display properly in 1080p and 4K? I would have to put it onto the TV to get it into 4K, but other than that, we should be good. Okay, so I'm expecting this to throw out an error. Yep, there we go. Just in time. So let's just connect up a controller. Well, I would if I put the batteries the correct way around. There we go. Press the sync button. There we go, that's sync to controller. Excellent. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to plug in a USB. So I've got a USB with OSU1 on it. OSU stands for Offline System Update. So if I go to Troubleshoot, and then when I plug this in in a second, we should see it come up, Offline System Update. There we go. Okay, I'm going to let that run. I'm going to hopefully get this installed, and hopefully everything's working fine. And there we go. Okay, so we are done. So I'm going to run through the setup, and I'm actually going to do this from my phone, I think. So it's actually easier for me to do this through my phone. So what I'm going to do, I'm not logged into... Well, actually, I am logged in, so I'm going to log out. There we go. So I'm going to press Setup Console on my phone, and then I'm going to enter the code on the TV, or rather on the display. Connect to console. Uh, connect. There we go. And then I'm just going to let everything set up on its own. It's just easier to do it on my phone. And I'm not sure if that's actually working or not. Okay, it doesn't appear to be working. Okay, we're connected. Uh, we need an update, okay. So now I'm going to run it. I'm going to change the code on the phone. And then scan the QR code. And now it's going to let me sign in through my phone. And run through the setup. So now it should work. There we go. Skip remote features. Let's set it to no barriers. No instant signing. Skip the family accounts. And no thanks. Next. So this should save me doing all of this. It'll just boot back up again. I'll just start fresh. No, it won't be used by kids. And there we go. So now the console's going to update. And then once it's done, it should boot me straight into my own profile. Yep, so we can see the QR code has gone there. So that should be good to go as soon as it's booted in. And here we go. So it's just checking the settings now. And then it should pretty much be ready to go. And yep, indeed it is. So it's got my account details on it. So I'll turn the controller on. Press A. And here we go. So let's just skip through these last little bits. While I'm doing that, I'm going to pop in a game disc. Nope, Game Pass is a scam. So I'll pop in Destiny to test the game. Or rather to test the disc drive. Yep, there we go. Okay, it's displaying in... 1080p, it's not going to work in 4K. I'm going to try it, but it's not going to work. Nah. It's not going to display in 4K on the capture card. Just make sure it's still connected to the interwebs. Yep. And I'm not seeing any messages saying that it's been banned or anything like that. Everything appears to be working. There we go. Happy days. So, I mean, I'm not sure why this was sold as faulty. Because the seller obviously took the hard drive out, which means it must have been working, unless the hard drive is faulty. And in that case, then just changing the hard drive would have fixed it, which I could have done because I was already inside the console. So, really not sure why. But, that being said, this is working, and it all appears to be working absolutely fine. It's just installed in the game. I'll let that game install, then I'll just load it up and make sure it works, but it should be absolutely fine. One thing I did, well, a couple of things I did realise, I just took a screenshot of my, well, myself, holding a motherboard, because I'm going to be doing a live stream tonight, and I realised, number one, my hair really does need cutting, and number two, my shirt is really, really quick, so, not setting a good example for Tronic Fixes merch, am I? Oh well, never mind. But anyway, that being said, a big thank you to Kip for holding the screws for me, a big thank you to you for watching the video, I really do appreciate it, I hope you enjoyed it. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. 
I always do my best to read and reply to as many as I possibly can, and I do enjoy reading people's comments as well. And if you do want to organise a repair, feel free to get in touch. There's a website link in the video description, consolefix.co.uk, and that will take you to my website where you can book in the repair, or you can get in touch if you do have any questions about the repair. Don't forget to subscribe, like I said, if you do like these videos, and turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you want to support me, there's a few ways you can do so. You can become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking your Amazon Prime account to Twitch and then subscribing that way. That's completely free for you to do. You can become a Patreon sponsor using the Patreon link in the video description. Massive shout out to my Patreon sponsors as well. Kip is a top tier supporter on YouTube and he's a channel member. That's another way that you can do that. He's a top tier member and I highly recommend checking him out. If you're a top tier member already and you've got a channel, let me know and I'll give you a shout out in the video as well. And uh, yeah, a big, big thank you to everyone who does support me in these videos and things like that. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.